So recently I made a video on rendering and I thought it'd be kind of fun to, again, important to expand on the topic of edges. So what is edges? Uh, fundamentally, I guess it is how to transition between two values. Although that's really not the best definition. It's good enough for now. So how do we go from this black value to this kind of gray value? So, you know, the basic is just, oh, just render it out, right? We can just kind of do this, take a bit of the middle color and transition. And, you know, hey, you know, we, we rendered this out, we transitioned, right? And this is good enough, but uh, this is kind of limited. We, there's other way, other things we can do. So, uh, let's to kind of talk about edges. What we really have to talk about is the edges of geometry. What kind of edges we have? Well, we have a sharp edge, right? Then we have a soft edge that is a rounded edge. So imagine this is a box, right? Imagine this is like a, some kind of box again, right? So we're fundamentally talking about these kinds of things, right? And how do we represent the, this kind of curvatures in a painting, right? Because we all know that like this, this is going to have, this is going to look differently than this, right? So how do we, how do we, how do we show this? How do we show this? So for example, like a sharp edge might transition between these two values like this. And now if you want, we can add a bit of ambient occlusion here and here. Just to, you know, uh, uh, just to round this off, we can just give it a bit of a border, right? But notice how sharp the transitions are between these two uh, values. And it kind of gives us the illusion of this being a box, or something that's boxy. Now, if we had this kind of thing, So now if you have a situation like this, can, we can see how this sharp edge here kind of doesn't work, right? It kind of looks awkward. I mean, maybe you can pull this off. It's a very highly, you know, cell shaded stylized way. But for the most part, it doesn't really, uh, it doesn't really feel correct. So then we have to render this out. We render this out and suddenly with only a couple strokes, This already kind of looks a lot better, a lot more interesting. This looks a lot more believable. And now if you if you really want to push this, we can add a bit of a core shadow right here. Just to kind of push this a bit. And you know, if you we can actually put a bit of a core shadow here just because that's probably what it would also be. But, you know, So you see how like changing the way we a render how we transition between these two values we completely change how these objects read right if i wanted i could legitimately just go like this oops like this and transition between these two things and suddenly this edge looks a lot more beveled right it looks kind of like a beveled edge you know just by kind of rendering out these two values in between suddenly you know this looks like a kind of a beveled rounded edge, right? So this is the power of transitions. And knowing how and when to use these two things is extremely important and powerful. And this will level up all your paintings by tenfold. Uh, I'm gonna this is the this is the key to painting. Knowing good value and knowing how to control your edges will get you 80% of the way there. 80% of the way there you don't need to learn color at all. Just knowing how to use these two things will really upgrade anything that you do. So if you want a bit of a formal, I guess, thing, uh, you can say that there's three types of edges. Sharp, 
soft and lost so how do sharp edges look well we kind of saw this they are basically we have a very abrupt transition between two values that's basically this is a sharp edges this is sharp now this doesn't mean that a sharp edge has to be straight uh, you can play around with this it doesn't have to be you can have something like this right you can create something like this and that still is a transition it's still a transition technically right but you know it's a lot more interesting uh you know uh the, the the sharp edge just really means is that the transition between these two values is abrupt it's not blended it's just abrupt so again play around with these edges that's kind of uh a good way to do it a good way to do it but it's still an abrupt transition these values are changing abruptly soft transitions are basically again the same way as we described we take two values and then we just kind of blend in between them, right? And we kind of create these like soft transition. I'm gonna put this a bit like like this. Right? There you go. That's a soft transition, right? Now again, the same with sharp edges, you can put in texture, right? You can have texture here. But as long as this kind of reads like a gradual transition between these two values, right? It still reads like a soft transition, right? This still feels softer than this, right? So this is more of the principle. The principle is soft transition. We have a gradual change between these two values, right? And then we get the third one. This is the interesting one. This is the one that's very difficult to talk to. It's a talk about it's lost edges. Lost is essentially when the transition between these two values is so large that effectively you don't even know where it begins or where it ends. Uh, it's the something maybe like this. Uh, maybe there's not enough space to show this, but it's essentially a transition that's so wide. There is no point. You, you can't really take a line and point to it where, where the transition happens. The decision happens here somewhere. I don't know. Somewhere here. Like here in soft edges, we can kind of say, oh, the transition is about here, right? But with lost edges, they're so wide. They're so spread out. Uh, it's super, super difficult to kind of tell where the transition happened. Now, if you want a bit of an example of where this kind of can happen, uh, an example might look something like this. So we'll take one of these objects here. So lost edge might appear somewhere here where you have such a soft, gradual plane change that it will happen over like a very large surface area. So I'm just kind of trying to blend this out to see if this will work. It should. So if we sharpen this back to its original. Give it a bit of an edge. Sure, let's say this is good enough, right? Again, the point is that it, the transition is so soft and so long that you kind of can't really tell where it begins or ends. Uh, I'll be honest with you. For the most part, this is very much only used on like really big surfaces to give them a bit more interest, to give them a bit of a transition. That's really where you want to use this at. It's not something I really pay much attention to, but it's usually something you just put on really large surfaces, like really big curved surfaces might have transitions like this. The point is it's so big, you kind of can't tell where it begins and ends. So you can see me here giving the initial sketch, putting in the initial sketch that I was happy enough, adding a bit of a background, the base value, 
just marking some shadow shapes, the basic stuff, a bit of ambient occlusion on the eyes and behind the nose to get a bit more depth, uh, kind of forming that kind of cheek. Now doing a bit of the nose, and I'm flipping like crazy in these kind of videos because uh, they're sped up, so it looks like I'm extremely schizophrenic, but uh, I typically don't try to flip as often. But, you know, marking the light areas and then kind of deepening these shadows. And now we're doing a bit of blending, just putting in some details where I think it needs. Defining some shadows, rendering some shadows a bit. Deepening some of the, defining the glabella, the forehead. And as you can see, I'm like jumping across, <coughs> jumping on the drawing. I'm not staying very uh, concentrated on one area for very long periods of time. I just kind of like to jump across and kind of see where I'm at. Now kind of defining the eyes because it's very important. Eyes are like the most important part of the painting. Uh, everyone's going to forgive you like broken face anatomy, but no one's going to forgive you broken eye anatomy. Like eyes are the most important parts. Anything else kind of doesn't matter. Doing a bit of the ears, now doing a bit of a background just to kind of give it a bit of better framing. Playing around with some shadows, pushing some light shapes. Just seeing how these things work, adding a bit of a highlight on those cheeks and the kind of uh, the kind of fold uh, between the mouth and the eye. Do a bit of the forehead, defining a bit of the lips, playing around with some light shapes. I wasn't happy with those, so I deleted them. And that's just a lot of push and pull. That's that's essentially my process. It's like do something, see if it works, delete it. Defining a bit more shadow, giving it a bit more of a jaw. Defining the cheekbone a bit more. Maybe I pushed it a bit too hard, but you know, it is what it is. Now I'm just kind of rendering out a bit. Just kind of making these transitions a bit softer, defining some shapes, doing a lot more detail work. You can do this part for like hours. I know people who do this for hours, but I like to be pretty fast. Okay, so I'm relatively satisfied with this kind of quick little painting without reference. Uh, Let's, let's just call it done. Uh, now, it could be better. I could have done it better in some areas. But for now, I think it will help us illustrate kind of the way I think about edges. And really, where I use them. So, as you will see, so I mostly use soft and sharp edges. I really don't mess around with lost edges a lot. Because, as I said, we'll talk about them a bit just in a second. But, when it calls, again, when you call, talk about sharp edges, like you can see them everywhere. Like here... Uh, like here, 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 even here you can kind of see one, you can see one here, you can see one here, you can see one here. And again, all these kind of transitions are there to give you the illusion of like we have kind of a round shape and then going into a sharp shape. Or in this kind of case, we have like a sharp shape going to a sharp, you know, flat shape going to a flat shape. And so again, the way you do this is you kind of render this top part to kind of give you the illusion, illusion of roundness. And then you just have a very abrupt change and give a very bright tone right here. And again, you have a feeling of a sharp shape. So again, the way that you do this is, so again, you have a certain, imagine this is like a rounded plane. You blend it out a bit. And again, depending on how wide you make this, will kind of give the illusion of how uh, big, how, how rounded it is. And then you just do a sharp shape right here, sharp transition right here. And if you put highlights on this, we can have like a highlight here that kind of transitions into this. And then we have very bright highlight here, right? Like this, right? So this is kind of how, how I do it all the time. So I basically, again, you can see it everywhere on this uh, little portrait. Now, Soft edges, again, they can be found typically here. Soft edge, here is a soft edge, here is a soft edge, here, typically going away from sharp edges, here, here. Now, lost edges, I don't really have a lot of, actually, and none. Uh, I, can, I can't really spot one that you, I can see on this. But lost edges can typically be sometimes of a, a compositional thing. So, for example, I can, like, uh, get this cheek a bit here and then I can like blend it a bit into like the background if I really wanted to like I can do something like this now I don't know if this is good or not but uh, 
it's definitely more of a compositional thing. Uh, it definitely, and I could just kind of blend this. If I blend this into the background enough, it will kind of lose the form and we'll kind of won't be able to see where it kind of transitions. Now, you can do something like this, right? And so it kind of creates this kind of a compositional thing. And if this is if, if you like this, if you don't, again, this really much depends on like your uh, tastes. For example, here on the forehead, we can have a bit of a lost edge. We can kind of push this, these values in, into each other so they kind of lose their kind of uh, transition. Even, you know, even maybe some places like here, we can have a bit of it. If you really want to, we can, you know, maybe this cheek, we have a, we can kind of lose the edge a bit. But typically, uh, lost edges are much more of a compositional type of thing. They are there to kind of create ambience and kind of atmosphere. Uh, I very rarely think about them when I'm painting. I'm usually thinking about sharp and you know soft edges. Like, for example, on this jaw, right? We have a very slight transition. So the point of painting, ultimately, in edges is just understanding the topology of your object that you're like drawing. So how does a, you know, how do we, how does, how does this, how do these forms look like? If we had to like, think of this as like a 3D wireframe. Like how do these, how do these objects intersect with each other? How do they, you know, how do they interact with each other? You know? If I had to, you know, and from any angle, let's say we had to do it from here. How does this forehead go into this, this, you know, this is the point of painting, just figuring out these edges, figuring out what kind of uh, shapes these things create and basically just putting in the right values there. And that's kind of it about painting. You know, if you get the values right and if you get the edges right, anything is going to look okay.